The big question is, is the Neo the most perfect drone for boating? Yes or no? The reason I say that is I've lost the drone overboard and I know plenty of other people that have. Harry, I'm talking to you. And also, looking at some of the channels overseas, one of our favorite channels, In Too Deep, I've lost count of how many drones he's lost. Now, this little fellow is battling against the wind today, but it's still tracking me. But the reason I like this so much is it's completely caged. You can grab it and the grabability makes it a really positive drone to use when you're boating. However, I will say that I've had one or two flyaways with this drone. Also, it doesn't automatically return to home. So you have to keep a very good eye on where the battery is. So I'd recommend using the app. Otherwise, it's a great drone. And um, I'm gonna tell you why. Caught again. This is good. I'm liking this. But not only can you just work through the shots that are within the drone as well, you can fly it like a normal drone without a controller by just using the DJI app. Now, I'm just flying this, flying this from the drone itself, just by literally pushing the buttons on the top and getting it to follow me. Um, however, there is another way to fly it. You can fly it with one of the nominated controllers. I have one of those controllers as well, or straight from the DJI Fly app. And that's what I'm gonna try and do now. This has to be one of the coolest features within this package. The DJI Fly app, although I had some problems installing it, supports this device. And if you connect directly to it, which I'm doing now, you can fly it like a normal drone from an app with inside your phone. You don't need a controller. Now, I would recommend that if you're using this on a boat, that you use this app. And the reason I say that is because you can see straight away um, how much battery you've got remaining. And it will tell you, there, you've got your battery monitor at the top there. But you can also use it then as an FPV drone. And it's looking at me right now. And I don't want it looking at me. If you can see there, let's look at the boats. And I'll show you what this can do as an FPV drone. So you can choose here how you want it to fly. You can put direction tracking in there. You can spotlight, rocket, circle and follow. Or you can free fly this device. So let's have a go at doing that. And you can change the settings as well. So to follow distance, if you don't want it to follow close and you want it to follow a medium way away, you can do. Follow high or low will take you to a higher plane. So it'll go higher and follow you at a higher level. Or it'll follow you from lower down because the one axis gimbal will look upwards. So pretty good. I have to hold it down to take off. And when you hold it down to take off, it brings up these controls here. I've been using the DJI Neo for several days now and I absolutely love this drone. But is it a good drone for boating and being on the water? Well, it may be, but it also may not be. And I'll tell you why. First of all, one of the biggest problems when you have a drone on a boat or if you're canoeing or anything is when you try and get it back on board. You've got those propellers whirring around and you get your fingers in those, it really hurts or it clips something and suddenly the drone is in the water and it sinks. Like any other DJI product, if this goes in the water, it will sink. But with the cage on, you can literally grab this. Even if it doesn't land on your hand, you can grab it out the air. So that's gotta be a bonus. It will fly autonomously and follow you and do all the dronies and all the shots that DJI are famous for. But the biggest benefit here is you can fly it from the DJI Fly app. And when you open it up in the app, it will give you a couple of little controllers on the screen of your phone where you can fly it from. And I would recommend that that's how you fly it if you're gonna use it on the water. The reason for that being is there's two faults here. First of all, the battery life isn't what's published. I've not been able to get anything more than 12 minutes out of either of my batteries. And even when I've put this straight in, fully charged, and started the DJI Fly app, it tells me I've got 10 minutes and 22 left on the battery 
which is a little bit odd. That's not quite what was published. Maybe that's because I've set it to record at 4K and 30 frames a minute, which is using more processing power. I don't know, haven't tested it that far yet, but 4K 30, it gives you really, really good image quality and good stabilization. It's a couple of negatives that are coming up here. I mentioned that there's no return to home function. That means if this battery gets low, it's just gonna try and land. So you need to be aware of what your battery status is. And again, the DJI Fly app is going to be able to give you that answer. Like everything else, there's a chance you could lose this overboard. But I think at £169, this is excellent value. For the product itself, you get the drone, a spare set of propellers, a battery, and you just have to connect it and download the DJI Fly app and you can use it without a controller. For £299, you get the controller, two extra batteries and a three-way charging hub. Now, do you need that? because this is compatible with quite a lot of the current controllers. And I have one of those controllers on my Air 2S. So I am going to use this as it is. I've purchased one extra battery for £35 and I've bought two years care refresh because I can use, I can lose four drones and get four drones replaced. Now, here's the other downside bit. In auto mode, I've had two flyaways with this. The first time I was having it in follow, automatic follow, it was following me, it launched, it was following, and then it started backing away and descending and just descended straight into bushes. It was quite near to water and that really worried me because if it had turned just a few feet the other direction, it would have been in the water. It was quite windy and this doesn't have the same wind capability of former drones. Therefore, just be careful in windy conditions. I think you can have a lot of fun on the water with this drone. The next step is for DJI to make one that's actually waterproof and floats. That would be a massive gain. But for now, £169. It's a great product. I've had a lot of fun with it. And do I think it's good for boating? Yes, I do. But just be careful. Use the DJI Fly app or a controller. Have a lot of fun with it. You can fly it into the boat and you can grab it so it will offer a lot more flexibility the last thing i want to mention is if you use the dji fly app it will automatically copy the footage to the phone this has 22 gigabytes roughly of internal storage so there's plenty of space in here to record the footage for you to download and i think using the dji fly app is just a way forward with this Last words from me. Do I think this is good for boating? Yes, I do. I think it's an excellent product to get out onto the water, especially in the inland areas where you haven't quite got that wide open space and the wind is not so strong. Be careful with wind. Have a lot of fun with it. If you're a kayaker, a canoer, or you're just out on the water in any other way, it's probably the right product for you. Just don't get it wet. Don't let it fall in the water and don't lose it. I'll see you soon. Take care now. Next time.